Now I want to refresh another concept we have talked about before, which is variables and levels. Okay, so you have a hypothesis about how a predictor variable, which could be a true independent variable that you want to manipulate, probably not, probably it's something participants already have, like gender. You are using a predictor variable and you expect that it's going to uh, influence some kind of outcome in your outcome variable, your dependent variable. Okay, um, well, that independent or predictor variable can have different levels, meaning how many categories does it have? In most cases where y'all have levels of uh, a predictor variable that participants already have, like levels of gender, gender for sure is going to be a nominal or categorical piece of data. Um, there are independent variables that can have different levels, right? Different like groups. So in this case, our levels of the predictor variable are female, male, non-binary, I'm kind of grouping agender and non-binary and gender fluid, the people here into just the same kind of non-binary group. Now I could actually break that out. I could actually break that down into more groups if I wanted to. I could say I have female, that's one level. Agender is another one. Male is another one. That's three so far. Non-binary makes four. Gender fluid makes five. I could say that this is a variable with five levels. Right, so that is kind of up to you how to categorize things if you allowed participants to report um, something where they just filled in a blank on an open-ended question. But uh, in experimental studies, you can also have independent variables that have a level levels that are amounts. The biggest thing y'all are going to need to figure out in order to decide which analysis you want to use, and I'm going to give a lot of details about how uh, you can figure this out, um, is going to be whether your variables of interest are categorical or continuous. So by continuous, I mean those interval and ratio ones. We can do particular types of math with that. And so uh, that's going to lead you down a certain branch of statistics. Now, you're not actually doing these statistics because you're not collecting the survey data. You're just going to write up a little plan, right, of um, here's how I would do my statistics uh, if I were to collect this data. And then some of y'all might have categorical data. You can have variables that are uh, nominal or that are like the ranked ordinal data. But either way, I'm gonna call those categorical. So that's the biggest decision you need to make. Like the first thing you need to figure out in your decision tree is, is my independent variable categorical or continuous? Here's another categorical one, another categorical one, and a continuous one, okay? Another thing y'all are gonna have to figure out is exactly which numbers you would use in an analysis. Now you're not gonna have the numbers, but let's say you have a list of several survey questions, like for this misophonia questionnaire, right? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven triggers for misophonia that a person can have. And I, each participant took all of these. Let's say that misophonia was my dependent variable. That's my outcome. And I have something that I think influences that. Let's say it was age. Let's say that I hypothesized that younger people would have a higher amount of misophonia than older people. So as age goes down, misophonia goes up. As age goes up, misophonia goes down. That's what I hypothesized. Let's pretend. In that case, I need a single score for age, like just one column, okay? One question that could represent that. And a single one to represent misophonia. But I have seven for misophonia. I've already got one for age, so we're covered there. That's great. For these misophonia triggers, I've got seven of them. What do I do with that? Well, um, since they're all on the same scale, they are all on that zero to four, that means not at all to a whole bunch or whatever the word is for that. So there's a few different ways I could measure this. Let's say, um, what if I just wanted to count whether they even have a trigger or not? So if they put anything that's not a zero, I'm going to count it as yes. Participant one has one, two, three, four, five triggers. And I would do that for every participant. I could do that with some fancy Excel formulas, theoretically. Um, and I could test the difference between 
the number of triggers in older and younger people. And that would be a correlation analysis because I would have two continuous variables and it's ratio data that has a true zero. If they had zero triggers here, it would mean they had a zero actual misophonia triggers, okay? But um, there's a different way I could measure misophonia and I've already got it created here. I'm gonna call, it's just triggers average, right? Which means the average of the strength of those triggers. So participant one, uh, if we average together their results on all seven of those, we get a single number that for that participant describes the overall intensity of their response to misophonia triggers. So uh, in many cases, an average could make sense for y'all. In some questionnaires, a total score makes more sense. Maybe I don't want to know somebody's um, average on mindfulness. Maybe I want to know, just add up the intensity of what they put on each one of these questionnaire items. And I wanted to give them a total mindfulness score on all 39 of these items. There's a lot of them to scroll through. Okay. And I don't actually have a total score here because this scale has subscales, but let's just say it was mindfulness total, or you could put some to remind yourself that that's what it is. I'm just gonna add the subscales together. So this person has a mindfulness score of 123. I would do that for each participant. And then I would have a single column for a variable I wanted to use, mindfulness, and a single column for another variable I wanted to use, misophonia. And then I would have a single column for another variable I want to use, age. So you need to figure out how it looks in your data. And this might change some of your survey design, right? You're, need to, you're gonna need to use my feedback, but also use this like logical process to figure out how could I get a single anxiety score, right? If that's something you're asking about. You might want to make all of your anxiety questionnaire items have the same scale as each other. Put them all on a zero to four, where zero means not at all, and four means extremely or something like that, right? Or um, some of y'all have already created more survey items that you need and they don't all have the same rating scales. You don't have to use all of them in your statistics. So you could give people more questions than what you plan to use in this study. So even if I had other misophonia questions, which I do actually, I ask them about um, your responses to triggers. So I'm like, how often do you leave the room? How often do you avoid your triggers? How often do you cover your ears? Okay. And zero means never. And four means like every friggin' time. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, with shades in between, I ask participants these questions, but let's say I'm not using those in this analysis. My independent variable was just age and my dependent variable was just their triggers, the intensity of the response to the triggers. So you have some choices to make there to um, figure out how to count your variables. And the way that you're gonna count it is gonna depend on how you ask the survey questions. And then once you uh, have survey questions, you would need to kind of logic out which ones might need to be added together, which ones might need to be averaged together. Um, generally, if you have interval data, we add them together instead of taking an average, okay? It makes less sense to take an average of the mindfulness data that's already way over here because I unhid some columns. It makes less sense to take an average of this mindfulness data, okay? We want actually a total score instead where we summed them together. Um, or, but if you have ratio data, it's more appropriate to take an average. Okay, so the things you are gonna do to your data are gonna depend on what types of data you have. And those are some decisions you get to make as you're finishing up writing your questions. That's all I have for y'all now with this brief application, just an overview of looking at variable types in real world data. Um, please let me know if you have any questions about how you would count your variables and figuring out what types they are.